Welcome to the Crazy Head Chemist. So today we're doing another video in atomic structure and electron configura configuration. So let's get moving. Bam! So today we're doing the electron configuration, orbital box diagram, and quantum numbers, a set of four quantum numbers for silicone. So before you get started actually on any of these problems here from the rest of this, for starting here for the rest of these videos here for this particular unit, you need to get yourself a periodic table. Now, it doesn't have to be as large as my periodic table back here, but you do have to get yourself a periodic table. So it's critical that you have yourself a periodic table. So let's get moving. We're gonna do silicon. Silicon has a Z of 14. That is the atomic number is 14. The atomic number is 14, which identifies which element it is. That's silicone. There are no other elements of which have a Z. They are the atomic number of 14. It's also the same as the number of protons, which are 14. Okay, and since we are dealing right now with silicone and that doesn't have a charge at this moment in time here, then the number of protons and the number of electrons are equal. Okay, because it's a neutral element. So, the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to find silicone, and it should be easy to find on your periodic table because it's a Z of 14, i.e. a atomic number of 14. So, you're going to walk yourself through the periodic table. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. Find 14. It's SI for silicone. And then from there, now you're going to write out the electron configuration for silicone. So, you're going to always start off with 1S1, then 1S2, etc. Okay, so here is the electron configuration for silicone. That is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p2. I've read it correctly. None of those are read as 1s squared. That just doesn't work. It's 1s2, 2s2, etc. Okay, now we're going to write this another way here. Okay, and we're going to write it uh, like this. And this is called a certain thing, but we are using a noble gas core. So that is the noble gas prior to the element of our interest, which in this case it's silicone. So the noble gas prior to silicone is neon. So starting with neon, we're going to have this neon in brackets. It cannot be in parentheses. It must be in brackets as I have here. Okay, so when I write neon in brackets, that means I've included all the electrons up to and including neon. So that is one through 10, okay? So, um, uh, so if you look at neon, it's all the way up to atomic number 10. And so I need to include four more electrons after that. So I've counted all the way up to 10, okay? And that is, then after that, then I'm gonna do 3s2, 3p2. And this whole entire thing with the neon core is called the noble gas notation of silicone. I'm going to be using a lot of noble gas notations because things that are after silicone or really after neon, it's much easier to write the noble gas notation. Hopefully your professor or instructor will allow you to do the same thing. So the other thing here is that we need to get the number of valence electrons. And the definition for valence electrons, they, they are the outermost electrons of the largest principal quantum number, S and P orbital electrons only. So I'm gonna find the largest quantum number here. I have a one, a two, or a three. So I'm gonna find the largest principal quantum number, which is a three. And then it's S and P electrons of the, S, of the largest principal quantum number. So it's a three S two and a three P two. So it's these four electrons. You should also be able to determine this by looking at the periodic table and finding out what group silicone is in, okay? It's in group four. That's a 4A for the Roman numeral 4A, okay? So therefore, silicone has four valence electrons. This is going to play an important role when we start doing Lewis dot structures because we're going to have to figure out how many valence electrons are in that particular element. All right, so let's keep on going. We need to do the electron configuration and orbital box diagram. So for doing the orbital box diagram, we need to be able to write out each of the boxes and their labeling. So I've put the boxes here and the labeling that is appropriate. Okay, so what I'm using is I'm using the electron configuration as a basis. And then from that electron configuration, then I'm gonna do the orbital box diagram. 
question, can you do a noble gas notation of an orbital box diagram? Yes, you can, and we'll do some future videos that are just that as well. But for this one right here, right now, I am going to include everything from the electron configuration so that you understand how it's written. Okay, so I have a 1s orbital, that's a single box. I have a 2s orbital, that's a single box. The 2p orbitals is a set of three orbitals. That's why the boxes are attached. That's critical. Okay, then there's the 3s orbital, and that is a separate uh, box. And then there's the 3p set of orbitals that are three of them. Okay, and that's critical that you have all 3p orbitals, that is three boxes for the 3p or the 2p, all three boxes, even if they're filled or not filled completely, it doesn't matter. You need all three boxes. Okay, and the Ds, you're going to need all five boxes, and the Fs, you're going to need all seven boxes, whether you have one electron or as many as you can fill up the boxes with. So, now I'm going to place the electrons in this orbital box diagram in the order of which they is properly filled, and this is following all the rules, the Pauli exclusion principle, the Huns rule, the Aufbau principle, okay, etc. Okay, and so we're going to fill these in. So, first is up then is down anti-parallel spin paired electrons in an orbital, okay? And then up, then down, okay? Got that right, okay? Then up, and then the next box, that is the middle box, is up, then the next box is up. Now, since everything in the 2p is half filled, this is Hun's rule, I have the maximum number of parallel spins, now I'm going to start going back to the original orbital of which was in this same energy level and orbital type, that is this subshell of the 2p, and fill in and backfill this, and that is a negative one half, right? Okay, and then down, and then down. Those are all filled in. And then up, and then down. Now, I realize that even I, as an instructor or your professor or whatever, won't be able to figure out if they do up, down, up, down, up, down, um, up, down as opposed to writing it up, 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 down, down, down. But you really need to get into the habit of writing it correctly. That way you won't make a mistake later on because this is where it really matters right now. Because if you look in the electron configuration for silicone, it ends in a 3P2. So I need to have a 3P2. And that's why you need to follow the order that is uh, correct. And the correct order is up, and then the next electron is up. Now we're done with the electron configuration and orbital box diagram for silicone. Now, however, we're not done with this problem. Okay, so the other question is, is this paramagnetic or is it diamagnetic? You should be able to figure that out from here. Okay, paramagnetic has unpaired electrons and it is attracted to a magnetic field. Most elements are. There are only a few elements of which are not. Uh, and they are diamagnetic and would rather die than be in a magnetic field. So this is paramagnetic because it has at least one unpaired electron. It has two unpaired electrons. Um, okay. All right. So we're still not done. I am going to circle a electron here. Now I chose the last electron in silicone. So you should be able to actually find out the set of four quantum numbers for this electron based on just its location on the periodic table only. However, I'm going to delineate out uh, that you can get the four quantum numbers for any electron. So on all these uh, lectures here, I'm going to circle a random electron. I just happened to circle the last one here. Okay, and if it is the last electron in that element and it's a neutral element, you should be able to look at the periodic table and figure out what the set of four quantum numbers are just by looking at the periodic table and their location. That was in a previous video that we already did for this particular unit. So I'm going to uh, write out the set of four quantum numbers. That's N, L, M sub L, M sub S. Hopefully you can get these here before I do put the pause button on, restart the video. These are the set of four quantum numbers for that particular blue circled electron. Okay, now I'm going to delineate on this particular video here, right here, where these numbers are coming from so that you understand it, and then you can go on and do the other videos in that same fashion. So where is the N of 3 coming from? Here is the N of 3. I've highlighted it in the orange circle there for you. So it's a 3p orbital, and then it's N of 3. Where is the L of 1 coming from? The L of 1 is coming from the P-type orbital. S-type orbitals, the L is 0. P's, the L is 1. D's, the L is 2. 
F's to L is 3, etc. Okay, now, so that's where I get the L of 1. Now, where's the M sub L value coming from? The first thing that we have to do is actually label the boxes. Okay, the M sub L values are the 3D orientation along the XYZ plane. Okay, so the middle box is always a zero. And then if you imagine a number line, of which again, I have mentioned many times that this is not truly a number line because they are quantum numbers. But if you imagine a number line, you'll get the right answer. Okay, and that is the middle box is a zero. To the right of that is a increase of one digit. And then to the left of that is an, a decrease of one digit. That's a, okay, so that's a, a plus one and a minus one. So the question is, which box is the electron that I circled in? It's an M sub L of zero, because I circled that particular box, that particular electron. Okay, now the last one here is the M sub S value. The M sub S value is the spin of the electron. This has nothing to do with the orbital. The first three quantum numbers, the L, sorry, the N, the L, the M sub L, have to do with the orbital itself, and that last quantum number has everything to do with the spin of the electron. It's either clockwise spin plus one half or negative one half, and that's a counterclockwise spin. So since this arrow is up, that's a positive one half. Okay, and I've already highlighted that uh, electron in the blue color, so that's why it's up. So think about it this way. Um, if the arrow is up, that's facing towards heaven above. And heaven, generally, most people view going to heaven when you die is a positive thing. So if the arrow is up, then it's going to be positive. Counter to that is if the arrow is down, and that is facing towards hell, and generally people view hell as being negative. So that's why it would be negative if it's facing down. Okay, hopefully that electron configuration, orbital box diagram, valence electrons, paramagnetism, diamagnetism worked out for you. We did the noble gas notation, and we did a set of four quantum numbers for a random electron. It just happened to be the last electron. You should check with your periodic table so that you can get the set of four quantum numbers for any last electron in an element. It's right there on that uh, periodic table. Okay, so make sure you have a periodic table to do these. You can't do them without a periodic table. That is the first of many here, and I am the king of chemistry, baby. If you like that video, give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I would greatly appreciate that. That helps me out. So thank you very much. Have a delightful day, and I will see you next time for more cool chemistry videos.